Namaste Saraswate Deve. Namaste Saraswate Deve. Gauravani Pracharine. Nirvishesha Shunyavadi. Later. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So because of the limitations of technology please everyone put yourselves on mute and we want you guys to sing as loudly as you can. Vishen Rinda, maybe you guys can sing a couple more times and we'll all sing with you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Couple more times, couple more times. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama Rama Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Krishna Hare Hare Wow You know we have um, a new patron of mine Victoria here who I met doing this program with a friend in Mexico um, Narayana, Pablo, and one of the things we talked about is how like hard to remember, but that this is the whole 
the point of everything that we're doing. Like, it's so easy for people like me to get things way too complicated. But like, it's, you know, it's no exaggeration. Lord Chaitanya, the avatar for Kali Yuga, he says like, the whole thing is just gather with your friends and sing the holy name. Just sing God's holy names. Feed each other. Take care of each other. Sing God's holy names every day as much as possible. Do your work. Take care of your loved ones. Do your responsibilities. But just gather and chant God's names. It's like, okay, but what does that lead me to? Like, what do I get from that? And what do I do with the tools? It's like, wait, 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 no. That's that's the thing. <laughs> and, you know, you, we can feel it. You know, just a few moments of singing together and it all comes back so clearly, you know. You want to come say hi to everybody? Hi, Paul. <laughs> What's this? I don't know what it is. You're wearing an old school shirt. She's wearing an old school Montrology shirt. Isn't so it? is so yeah. So is Bhakti Sagar. But look right, at right, right. <laughs> Those are going vintage now. <laughs> I don't know what. Uh, Brian and Sydney are wearing, but that's old school vintage too. That's something. Look at that. It's like a handmade program over there. Yeah, matching. <laughs> Welcome, Robert. Nice to see you. Thank you, Gorbani. Sorry. Please excuse my tardiness. Okay, we'll forgive you this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, so thank you, thank you guys for nourishing my heart, even just a few moments of hearing your voices and, and being in your company. And um, thank you, Vish and Vrinda, for being a, a, a family and a couple that is, that is showing us through your example how to navigate and how to, how to do it. <laughs> we're, we're trying how to do it. We're trying to figure that out, but... I guess we're doing it as we go along and you know and i mean this is uh, rare for me to sit just with him because usually i have at least two kids in my lap so sure i was gonna ask what did someone kidnap them what happened to your three kids oh my god where are they <laughs> they're with grandma oh baby's baby sleeping right so now so we might have a baby like, here soon so nice well thank god for grandmas welcome amy welcome everyone so um so today we have a great opportunity to speak with um, uh, an incredible artist, uh, Bhakta, dancer, writer, mom, musician, um, my good friend who I've known since she was a troublemaking teenager, um, and wife of my beloved friend. Uh, so Vrinda, welcome to our little monthly Sangha. Thank you. I mean, I still really feel like a troublemaking teenager. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, yeah, no, I... Because we were troublemaking teenagers together, so we get to still relive those days every now and then. <laughs> so, so of course, there's really, there's no reason that we would need to get together, but um, Vrinda's busy and, you know, we're all busy. So this is an opportunity. Vrinda's coming out with her third volume of this series that she's been writing now for seven years. How long have you been working on this? Ten plus years, really. I don't even want to admit how long. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you had mentioned to me that you had started working on this Ramayana series as a dancer when you were studying in India. Right. Yeah. I mean, when I started writing this, I was living in India and in Kalakshetra, this dance school, which is basically like a boot camp for Bharatanatyam, this Indian classical dance. And it was very intense, demanding and satisfying physically. But mentally, I could feel like there was just, you know, I'd come out of college, I was used to writing papers. And, you know, so there was so much happening in my mind. And also, it was a tough year emotionally too. So I really was looking for something to absorb my mind in and by God's grace, you know, I got this opportunity to just dive into the Ramayan storytelling tradition. And it, it is, it was a complex enough process that, you know, it fully engaged my mind and my heart. And even at the time, it's kind of funny when I look back at it, I didn't have a computer. I didn't have any of the things that I have now Google. to write, you know, so and I, I wasn't even allowed out of my dance hostel 
only once a month. <laughs> you know, they were very strict. We weren't allowed. How do they spell the that down there? H O S T I L E. Hostel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it was a hostile environment uh, <laughs> for you know any kind of writing. So I would just scribble in notebooks and then sneak away to these like internet cafes once a month and you know write down whatever came to me. So that was really the beginning of of this entire journey that turned into a trilogy. You know when my mom and I, because my mom has illustrated the books. When we started it, we had. We'll no see. So you're going to share some of those a little later. Some of those. Uh... I can show the the covers of the books right now. Can it's... you allow us to screen oh, share, yeah, Cora? You need oh, so to sorry. Yeah. Enable ho yeah participants to screen share and then. Oh, yeah. Um. Okay, yeah. Sorry. So I did it with my mom. I think if I was alone in it, it would have been too intimidating and overwhelming to take on a story that is so beloved, like the Ramayan. You know, like Denise was sharing when she came to the end of the Ramayan, it was just kind of devastating because it is a story that has so many strings attached and, and there are figures in the story that we have so much emotional attachment to. So to actually go in there and work with the story, to look at it honestly and to confront some of the more challenging and disturbing episodes in the in the story that was a huge part of my entire process in, in in retelling so this is making me make you the host so just be aware now that you until you give it back to me you guys are the host i don't have such a fancy zoom membership so okay so 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 yeah let's touch on that because um you know denise mentioned how reading the ramayana after so much into you know we always hear these People like, you know, Krishna, that's how he says, Ram, 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 you know, and then Denise is saying that she's reading the story of Ram and it ends with Ram being a total jerk to Sita. Right. So, so, you know, that's a, that's an interesting thing. I wanted to share one thing on that. I have a friend, um, you, you know, do you know Sarvatma and Divya? Me? Yeah. Sarvatma. The name sounds familiar. I'm not. Sarvatma's familiar. from. He was in Santa Barbara. His wife Divya. They. We. We might have seen them a couple. Oh yeah, times. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He sings Kirtan. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. They've been through such a rough time. They got COVID and everything. And then after they're starting to get their things sorted out, she finds out that she has some sort of ovarian cancer. And I was writing. You know, they made a group for friends to share thoughts and stuff. And I was just writing to someone that. You know, I hope we all eventually can figure out how to surrender to Krishna's will and that I hope Sri Radha somehow or other keeps him and his will in line because otherwise it's too intense to surrender to Krishna's will. So like, I guess I'm saying that just to say that the masculine and feminine personalities of Godhead have this interesting dynamic between them of different flavors. They each have their own moods, you know? So, you know, you're touching on how, how, yeah, the challenging parts of the Ramayana, um, kind of helped inspire you. And I, I, I would love to, yeah, well, why don't you tell us what we're looking at here? Okay. Um, so here is the, the first, the first book shadows of the sun dynasty. And I feel, you know, in the title itself, I'm kind of hinting at that we're going to be looking at some of the shadow aspects of the Sun Dynasty, which is, you know, Ram's family, they were really at the top of the hierarchy, so to say, you know, they were the royal family and under intense scrutiny and, you know, holding themselves to a very high standard. And, you know, they also had their interpersonal dynamics and different things. So I really explore that in in book one and here here we can see queen kaikeyi in this really important moment where she saves king dasharat he's he's here she saves him and that is such a central moment that usually in the story we only find out in a flashback we find out oh how did she gain so much power and influence over the king we only find that out in the moment where she exerts that influence so what we really did in our book is begin it at an earlier point so that we're with the character, the characters when these important things happen, you know, we 
see how this intense attachment between the two of them form. And so I really love this image itself. It shows her power and her courage and her bravery as a, as a, a queen. And it takes a lot of skill also to ride a chariot in this way, you know, and that can be overlooked. Kaike is often vilified, you know, just as a manipulative sort of, or sometimes just not a very smart type person who was manipulated by others. Um, so I like to be with her and, and with them as their relationship unfolds. And that that's really at the heart of Shadows of the Sun Dynasty. Of course, Ram and Sita are also in there, but it, it's more almost about his family dynamics than about them directly. You know how, you know how when you see somebody going through something and you know their background a little bit, it's so much easier to forgive them. It's so much easier to have compassion and understand where they're coming from. If, if you know their background, oh, you know, they went through a hostile environment or some, you know, issues in their childhood or whatever, you, knowing that it, it allows the compassion to increase. So one thing is that, you know, Brenda's told me that you said that Sita and in general, the woman's voices in the Ramayana has been how much percent you said? Well, I mean, so this is one of the things that really inspired me in my work when I discovered that, you know, even Sita, who's the primary female character in the story, the scholars who have counted in the 24,000 shlokas that comprise the Ramayana, and they've counted how many times she appears and it's about 10% of the text belongs to her or she appears in 10% of the text. And, and she's the heroine. So, I mean, you know, so even other female characters are just like in and out, you know, one liners basically. So we don't get to know them as much. And so when they, when they're either make, when they act a certain way, or they are reacted, or they react a certain way to a circumstance. We don't really know where they're coming from unless, like you've done, you go deep and deeper and deeper into the text itself to find these little like missing clues that are that are in there. That was definitely my experience. I I got to listen to the audiobook of Shadows of the Sun Dynasty, which is Rinda reading, which was really cool uh, to hear. You know, it's always nice to hear the author reading the book. And uh, that was my experience, that my relationship with the female characters in the Ramayana was so much richer. I got to know them, you know, yeah, it's a pretty magical. You, you weave a pretty magical story and it really pulls you in. And you, you know, you even understand and kind of feel for even the, bad characters you know well that's the that's the that's the way stories are told these days right <laughs> and, and i and i would say actually not even these days because ravana is still a loved character in some parts of india where he's actually worshipped as a god to this day you know uh so you know the anti-hero is still being uh you know Celebrate it. And I do want to add that this, the art that Brenda was showing is her mother's art. So of course the audiobook is available for book one and we'll work on book two and three, but, uh, but the art itself, you know, her mother, this project that mother and daughter did together, you know, of uh, her mother putting over 75 watercolor paintings in each volume. So that's like, there's, we have, we, now we have this like library, this, you know, of over 250 watercolor paintings of different aspects of the Ramayana. It's just, you want to show some more of the art or? I mean, you can go to our website, sitasfire.com. And my mom has a beautiful gallery there with a lot of the art. And it's kind of amazing to see it all just, you know, all collected. Cause you know, in the, in my, in the books, there is a lot of text. So it, you don't always get that full impression. So going to the gallery on the website and just getting that um, visual of the art collected. Not all of it is there, but. Plus we only have the slideshow of book one right now. Yeah. We're working on the slideshow of book two, but like, you know, this is a good one. <laughs> <laughs>
So I'd Victoria Victoria doesn't want any spoilers. She wants to read the book. She doesn't want any spoilers. I don't know. How are we going to do that? How are we going <laughs> to do this? Well, let me put it in the text. You said citasfire.com? Yes. Okay. I'm going to put that in there for folks. I get hmm. to I get to joke and 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 say some of these look like my mother-in-law, you know, because she's the artist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hard to tell. To explain my process is hard if I don't get to say any spoilers, because most people <laughs> I talk to, they kind of know the story, and so we have these big moments that I then use to flesh so out the we... rest. But why don't we do this? Why don't we have you guys sing a little bit and maybe you can play some some visuals while you guys you you thought you were going to do that maybe, right? Play some visuals and okay. and sing a little bit and then Victoria, if you have to go because spoilers are coming, then you know you can leave after that. Is that all right? <laughs> well, so we'd like to sing this bhajan that Gore and I love to sing together. Uh, it's called Ayodhya Vasi Ram. And, uh, and of course it's singing to Ram, but in the mood of, of this collaboration that we get to do together, we also want to uh, bring out the divine feminine or Sita's voice and Ram's mother's voice. So a lot of times this song that we sing, it says Dasarata Nandana Ram, the son of Dasarat, who is the father of Ram, so we like to bring in Koshalya Nandana, this, the beloved son of Koshalya, the mother of, and then of course there's other uh, beautiful names of Ram that connect him to to uh, his dear ones. <laughs> Let me put on the original sound. I just had that off for a minute. Uh, how do I... that with the... Yeah, should be. Uh, let me just figure out how to get back to. Sorry. Uh... Looks good from our side. Okay, I, it looks good. I'm just trying to turn on the original sound again. Oh. Let me let me just stop the share. There we go. Okay, now it's on. Now we start the share again. Perfect. Uh, share screen. Okay, this one, right? Okay, there. Ayodhya Vasira Ram Ram Tasharatanan Oh, 
solo for us, Gora. It's going to be really experimental. One of the fascinating things that I remember hearing from you, Vrinda, is about, actually, maybe I read it in the introduction of your book, is about the, the scholars who introduced your book were talking about how important it is to the story of the Ramayana that people tell it in their own voices and that it changes with the telling from the heart of the, of the, the people over history. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's something that really helped me to feel more confident in this work that I was doing of retelling, to realize that the Ramayana itself has a really rich storytelling tradition. You know, each region in India has its own version. It's told in its own dialect. So just in India itself, they say, you know, they're there are 200 or more versions of the Ramayana. And then, you know, now that English is becoming the globally dominating language, now we're seeing it being retold in English by, by so many different authors. And of course, whenever we come to anything, we're going to look at it with a view to not just tell it to our audience, but to solve problems that we see in it. I'm just going to exchange places with Vish real quick <laughs> with a baby. Hold on. I just think I don't want to. No worries. I like how 
how we like to keep it real here on the on the on the monthly bhakti <laughs> kirtan and bhakti hang you know we pull back the curtain there's no there's no wizard of oz over here I'll tell you that <laughs> so you know you know um yeah rinda do as you need we're all family here so if you need to, uh, we're recording i can turn the recording off if you no 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 no, no. it's it's i just free the nip <laughs> oh, wait <laughs> i am nursing but uh, i have you... to do it Vish, is it still recording or did it stop recording? It's recording. Okay, it says recording. Okay, good. Um, We're recording. So, so another thing I just wanted to bring up because I'm also a big fan of Rinda's mom and her art. Just a quality of her art, I can't even describe it. There's just something about those paintings that, and not just the, we have a big one of her original paintings of Radha Krishna in our, in our room. And there's something about her art that really speaks to me. It, it, um, I think, well, I don't want to overanalyze it, but I, but I do know that her story is that she's taken quite some time to find her own creative voice. And it wasn't like she was a prolific painter for years and years, right? There was a long time where she wasn't painting at all. Yeah, she, my mom, you know, she, like many early Hare Krishna devotees, she joined in her late teens, and then she just threw herself into, you know, sort of the missionary work, if you want to call it that, or the pioneering opening of centers and the movement. <laughs> so she put, you know, her personal talents and desires aside to just do the needful, do what needed to be done. So it really wasn't until, you know, much later in her life. That she, you know, really started painting and drawing. And and one fun thing that I, I want to mention is, you know, when we first started started this work, my mom actually painted Ram like saffron color or, you know, like human, like more like a human skin tone, I guess. And in the first book, uh, he was like that. And then it's because of Gora. My mom had this like long discussion with Gora and Gora's like, who is this saffron dude? You know, why are you painting him like this? And my mom and Gora had a long kind of deep discussion and she credits him actually. And what color this. did she end up painting him? So she ends up painting him green, which, you know, there's the a whole question, you know, in the Valmiki Ramayana, he's des described kind of like Krishna, oh. that darkish Shyam uh, color. So kind of like dark blue you know kind of this mysterious color but then in the Gaudiya tradition of course he's described as as green and well because of Gora's influence and because she trusts him and his devotional heart and she writes this actually in her author's note in 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 one of the books that she decided to trust Gora's you know vision of what Lord Ram looks like and she ended up going back even to her earliest paintings and like transposing this you know green hue on him and and now now that's his skin color and the whole thing so <laughs> your influence on her has been you know immense i would say well you know that so that of course i didn't make that up that comes from descriptions of some of the intimate associates of sri chaitanya they describe uh Lord ram in that way that's always the interesting thing about this process that we're on is you know, for one thing, we, of course, we, we get the, you know, the, the writings or the teachings of previous teachers. And at the same time, as an artist or as a writer, or even as a poet or, 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 or a musician, we're, you know, we don't know how Kirtan was done 500 years ago, or how art was necessarily done 500 years ago, or how we know we have some idea of how story writing is done, but how do we take you know, this is like a, a process to be a spiritual practitioner, take something that is in a sense timeless and I, at the same time apply it to our experience of who I am and our contemporary times. It's such an important point. And I think this is a great segue into into the kind of, you know, uh, question that, that um, Denise brought up. So I was listening to this a program called Radio Labs, and they have a story um, called What Up Holmes, and it's about the Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes. 
and his relationship with free speech and the First Amendment. And he went within a short period from being totally like, you could say kind of against free speech to being the number one supporter of free speech. And it was this interesting time in his life where he was interacting with these young thinkers, free thinkers, and they had this major impact on his life. So one of the points that's, that Oliver Wendell Holmes, this is a long way, but I thought this would be interesting to share with you guys. So this is a long way of making this point. But Oliver Wendell Holmes' whole thing about why free speech is so important, and he became this champion for free speech in the Supreme Court, is because he believed in the marketplace of ideas. So he had this idea that the best ideas will rise to the top in the process of dialoguing about them. But then now what scholars are saying is look at Facebook and look at Twitter and you'll see that lies and misinformation are growing six times as fast as the best true ideas on the internet. And so the, 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 some of these scholars on this program were talking about how the concept, the essential concept of the importance of free speech and sharing free ideas is still good. But the model that we've been using to understand that essential important thing needs to change in this new time. And that maybe it's not just enough that there's a free marketplace for ideas. So I'm tying that to, to, to this next question kind of for Vrinda is, if, if Rama in the telling, traditional telling of the Ramayana is not caring for Sita or respecting Sita in the way that we understand, you can kind of say, well, let's throw out the whole concept of Ramayana and let's throw out the whole concept of free speech, right? Free speech isn't working. So let's chuck free speech out totally. And let's go back to controlled, organized speech, more like authoritarian version of life. So I, I'm kind of curious, have you ever had anyone say to you, well, why do you even care about the Ramayana then? Rama is just this dominant male who... Bye, Victoria. Adios, amiga. Okay, she's split and she doesn't want to know about all this stuff. Okay, see you next time. She didn't want to. She didn't want to hit us. Get a spoiler, so she's splitting. All right. So yeah. So why even pursue the study of Ramayana if it's just another patriarchal construct? You ever had anyone ask you that? Well, yeah, I have a couple of things coming up for me as you you speak. And one is, you know, the need to have open dialogue and to be able to discuss openly what we feel, because sometimes in bhakti circles or religious communities in general, you know, we have our version or our ways of telling the story, which sometimes yeah. prevent us from looking clearly at how do we feel about these stories, how do they impact us in real life? Like, again, Denise, I loved what you said that, you know, it's usually like Ram is the perfect man, oh, Ram is the perfect yeah. king, Jai Sita Ram, like, and it's such an exuberant, lovely feeling to have. And then it's that mu much more devastating when we are confronted with these things, because they just hit us left field. And then there isn't really as much space or time or willingness to look at the more troublesome things the tendency is to kind of skip it over or you know minimize it somehow as if it's explain it away or... yeah there is that tendency so one really helpful thing for me in looking at the overall story was you know the story in the beginning of valmiki as the poet his telling of the ramayana is considered the oldest written form of it and, you know, when Valmiki started composing, the story behind that is that he saw two birds mating and he was kind of entranced by the, their beautiful, yeah. the two birds sitting on the branch, you know, yeah. engaged in this love play. And then a hunter shoots the one bird and she falls and the mate is devastated by this, the bird. And Valmiki is devastated by this too. And then the words that fall out from his mouth become this shloka. Uh, the poetry. So it's said that the shloka of the Ramayan comes from the shoka, which is the grief of Valmiki in seeing these two pairs, um, you know, devastated. So the foundation of the Ramayan itself that, or the impetus of the Ramayan came from this place of grief, from seeing two 
pairs being devastated. So that reframes, you know, we think, oh, the the Ramayana is a love story, or it's, but it's really not. It's it, it's a tragedy. It is full filled with with grief. So you know, when I understood that, it was a different context to to receive this story. You know. So that's I took a, I took this master class on Shakespeare, and you know, tragedy is a form that has a very clear structure in history. And it must leave you in this place of kind of feeling, oh, but if only, if only destiny had moved differently, if only, you know. Right. Yeah, no, I, I actually heard a study on NPR that was studying pop songs and which are the most popular songs, which are the ones that stick most in our mind. Wait, let me guess. Is it the Torch songs? Huh? Is it the torch songs, the like lost love, like I'll never, is that, are those the ones? Actually, it's the ones that, that make us feel ambivalent, that stay most in our mind. The, because if it's happy, it'll be like happy for a while, or if it's sad, it'll make us feel that way. But when it hits us in a way that we have to engage <laughs> with it and be like, how do I feel about this? And, you know, so this ambivalence, that's the kind of song that stays with us the most. And I immediately thought of the Ramayana where I was like, wow, this stays with us. It has stayed with us and it keeps staying with us because it makes us feel very ambivalent and uncomfortable. And we have to keep looking at, wow, why did this happen? And, and I think have the courage also to really confront that and not skip over it. You know, and then the final thing that I, I also really helped me and that I, I love to point out to people is that, you know, when I read Valmiki's yeah. in that moment that Denise was saying, when, when Sita, you know, goes into the fire, we have this moment of reunion, yeah. which we picked for the, the cover here, you know, after all this heavy stuff, finally they get to be united and we just want to see this. Like we we're yearning for the two of them to just, yes they're together union but then of course it, that doesn't happen the union is about to happen and ram just goes into this really cruel mode and rejects her and the fire you know it's it's just a devastating scene no matter how you look at it um and so the two things that have helped me to work with it is is one that everyone who was there when this was happening were also feeling the same thing, whether it be Lakshman, Hanuman, or all the monkeys, they're all wailing. They're all like, no, 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 Ram, what are you doing? This cannot happen. Why is this happening? They're having our same reaction. So they're not like, aha, good, now she's going to prove her purity. This is all great. They're also, you know, so the original audience had the same reaction that we have, which is just confusion, like, grief you know so that's important to look at too that's the original people witnesses to the scene also felt like what we're feeling so that's one thing and then the other thing valmiki says this one line he said i know none of you are paying attention to what we're saying right now <laughs> just looking at the cute baby so valmiki says this one line he says ram turned from sita the way a diseased the way a man who has an eye disease turns from the light so that line just is so informative to me because that shows that the even the poet himself he's not saying this is the way men should be this is the proper thing to do to your wife he's saying in that moment ram sita is the light and Ram is turning from that light the way a man with an eye disease will turn from the light. So the poet himself is saying Ram's vision in that moment was not right. It wasn't correct. It wasn't the way Sita deserved to be treated in that moment. So the original poet, this is not me coming up with my feminist, you know, anthem here and, and kind of inventing something new. Or This is the original poet is letting us know, hey, 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 this was not you know, and this moment, Ram was not living up to his highest standard. What we expect of Ram in this moment, he is falling short of that. And to tie that up, in Valmiki Ramayan, Ram is very, very, very human. His sense of being an omniscient god and being very much just playing a part, that comes in later traditions. For example, in Tulsi Das Ram Charitmanas, he becomes more 
of an omniscient Lord that's kind of above it. And that's just, interesting. I've never that heard is, that said that that way yeah, before. That's and Valmiki Ramayan, Ram is very, very human. It, it's, you know, Valmiki goes out of his way to show that Ram goes to very deep depressions without Sita. He is very much uh, relatable, very much in the in the human feeling all the human feels you know so when i when when i discovered valmiki's portrayal of her mind then i felt much more that i could relate and forgive and wow be with him when with with all all this like really confusing um these terrible times you know so those are some of some of my thoughts but i'm also still very much in the question and the discovery of it so beautiful well, that's so, um, it's so vast. It's so interesting to hear your journey in, in this um, process of discovering and rediscovering. It's funny because, you know, you've been around the story your whole life. You're like growing up as a Hare Krishna kid, we're some of the few people who know all the stories. Like we heard, we've heard them all from the very, very beginning. So it's not like you discovered Ramayana as a 30 something and you got curious about it and you learned about it like so for you to be wrestling with the story is quite fascinating actually you know <laughs> you, you've known it your whole life you know yeah. yeah um vish you have any thoughts or questions I, I i don't want to talk too much so i'd like to hear if you have any things about this that you'd like to bring up or or ask Brenda. Else maybe we can sing because it's in the meeting time. Yeah, we're almost at the end. I just want to mention that uh that you know well Brenda's had uh you know we have three three children and each time we had a child she also put out a book <laughs> pretty much. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> you know <laughs> so she's uh you know and at the same time uh, in no way uh you know, ignoring the kids, but being fully present for them and for me. So it's been, you know, just amazing to see a spiritual creative life in action, uh, you know, fully finding, you know, not that we always feel completely balanced, but somehow a balance in being creative in putting putting a product out there that that is not that is not just out there but that is inward that is uh, growing in internally the research that Brenda's done I mean she always says she's not a scholar but I'm always like you've read more Ramayans than anyone I know like all the versions you've actually you know you read the Sanskrit text itself and, and went through it you know so well not so, in Sanskrit not well See, good that's what a real scholar would do <laughs> you're working to get there you know but, <laughs> yeah, Vrinda only speaks three languages, lame o <laughs> and 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 da and, and da the language of dance too. But uh but you speak three languages, Vrinda, right? You you speak Swedish, English, and Hindi. Well, yeah, possible Hindi. I mean, you know, 70% Hindi. I I can I can manage. <laughs> Excellent. Well, look, um we have just a few minutes left and I would love for you if you guys would like to sing again I'd love to hear uh, in whatever way uh, we can hear your voices hear you sing some more and oh let's get some practical info so we put up sitasfire.com any other ways people can support your your book release uh, well we do have this uh, virtual book launch on April 20th okay we're going to be sharing specifically book three and my mom will be there to speak about her art and and jai jai utal will also share a song so that april so, 20th is and where do they get the info on that and it's also on my website sita's fire you register and get the zoom link and everything from there okay yeah. awesome What would you guys like to sing to close out? You want to sing? You want to sing? You have something in mind?
You got a solo for us, Gora? <laughs> Wrong key, sorry. <laughs> Sit down. 
<laughs> beautiful. So, so the, beautiful. So somehow, we the date of the book launch got moved a bunch of times, and mysteriously, mystically, uh, uh, April twenty first twentieth is Ram Nomi Eve. We didn't plan it that day, but it's coming. the The book is launching on Ram Nomi Eve, the day before the appearance of Ram, which is on April twenty first. So that just somehow happened that way, and we feel like it's like an offering to a sign a sign that the offering is being received yeah yep. yeah for sure i think it's i think it's such a beautiful thing when we can find a path to pour ourselves into our devotion and without it you could argue what's the point of spiritual life if you're just going through the motions where how how can it be alive so i think this it's just so beautiful to see your journey rinda with this and and how in a way really this is all about making ramayan your own you know which is really lovely yeah thank you Gaurav. thank you Thank you all. We're a few minutes over. Sorry. Look at Robert. Look, Robert looks like he's like in a Terminator movie or something. Oh, he's got a. Oh. Thank you all for joining. Can I go, Pal Prabhu? Sorry you joined late. You missed all the juice and nectar. Um, and Amy, wonderful to see you, Anna. Uh, we had a great comment from Yadunath. I didn't share it because it was in the wrong rasa at the moment. But he said, from the comedian's point of view, there's this age-old comic. Uh, gem. You want to tell us what it is, Yarina? No, it's just said that uh, people always ask, what, what is comedy? And the, uh, one definition of comedy is comedy is tragedy plus time. So you can make the joke, like, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? You can make that joke now. Just not on the day after the play. Right, right. So I just commented that uh, tragedy, you were talking about tragedy and defining tragedy. So tragedy is comedy minus time. It's interesting. It's interesting. Thank you. So nice to see you. Nice to be with you. Yadana Thru is one of my new patrons. So grateful. And Denise and Bill, we love you. So nice to see you together, singing and clapping. And you guys there in Texas, Sydney and Brian, we love you. We love you. Thank you. And Bhakti Sagar, thank you so much. Pleasure to join you. Did I say Anna already? Anna, so nice to be with you. And Aunt Susan, my darling Aunt Susan, and my darling Vishen Rinda. We love you, Gora. We love you guys too. Thanks so much. All right, well, we're going to put this recording out as quickly as we can so that it, it helps boost some of the stuff for, for Rinda's book launch. Um, remember, it's the same link every month. Uh, we blew it last the end of last month because we were on vacation we couldn't pull it off but again uh last thursday is going to be with my mom and i for this month um bhakti and philosophy and um, it's the same link every time so just keep this link and it's the second thursday and the last thursday of every month so thank you so much for being here we'd love to see you the last announcement i want to make is um we're planning a trip to the eco village again after you know kind of two years of being away because of covid the trip is planned for january 2022 so that it's going to be a very different trip than what we've done in the sense that we're not going anywhere i'm just going to be at the eco village for two weeks of focused study reading we're going to wake up with the monks we're going to do the puja the yamuna we're just going to sing and practice every day um a lot of times there are yoga teachers who come, so there can be independent yoga practice and stuff available for folks. It's just a time to spiritually recharge and rejuvenate. And of course, on both weekends, the weekend before the Flower Festival and the weekend of the Flower Festival, we'll go into the city for those epic Mumbai kirtans and we'll, we'll be with people for those kirtans. And folks who don't want to go out into the city can stay back at the Eco Village and enjoy themselves at the Eco Village, I'm sure. So we uh that's january 22 
So put that on your calendars. We love you all. Mwah! Hadi Bolo. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much, Vrinda, for being with us today. Thank you, little Cole. Hadi Bolo. Hadi Bolo. Hadi Bolo. Love you, Vish. Thanks so much for this time. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Have a wonderful time. See you soon. See you soon. I'm the only one that can end this. Oh,